consideration and action on the following items. The minutes of the regular trustee meeting, September 28, 2021, and a check report, September 9, 2021, through <coughs> October 8, 2021. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented items A and B. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Brown and a second by Jay Randalls to approve the cons consent agenda as it was presented. Roll call vote, please. Casper. Yes. Hanford. Yes. Randalls. Yes. Simon. Yes. Brown. Yes. Bowman. Yes. All right. Next will be the CEO's report. Candace. All right. So, um, IT status report things are going well. Um, our crowd strike. Um, software in place has not detected any threats, um, which is good. Um, we did meet with a um, hospital that actually has Meditech, has had for many years. Um, they've got about 26, I think he said, IT staff members um, in place, and we are asking them for a proposal to help us with our Meditech system to um, help with oversight and help us um, get it kind of tuned up, if you will. It's been a challenge for our IT staff because um, with COVID, they have not had any training opportunities available, so um, this uh, hospital would be able to provide us with seasoned Meditech specialists to help us, so um, hopefully something will come back. Um, inpatient has been busy still, uh, COVID is dying down, which we're happy about that. Um, staffing is good. Surgery, um, Dr. Greg, I got to talk to him today. Things are going well. Um, we did talk to, and last week we met with a company um, to explore the option of doing some orthopedic surgery here. Um, we're excited about that opportunity, and we're actually having a phone call tomorrow. To discuss that further. I heard from her today. Um, then we also are exploring um, a general surgeon that would come in. Uh, Dr. Greg um, is retirement, you know, he, he, he was not our full-time um, replacement for Dr. Ransom, so we are still exploring options, and Regina and I um, met with the doctor last week and had a great conversation and really excited about that possibility. So, more to come on that. Um, really not much else. Um, I was in Oklahoma City last week for a board retreat for OHA and did a lot of planning for that um, for the upcoming year. Um, not much else. If you guys have any questions, let me... Oh, I do have one more thing. Um, we met with EMS. This is not on my report, but... We did meet with EMS, um, they have a new director, Bridget Drag, um, and met with her and Angelica and um, did some planning uh, for down the road. We're looking to try to host some meetings for EMS um, for um, ALBA and the surrounding communities to try to um, bring some educational opportunities. Um, share in some of the continuing education that we um, take part in already here at the hospital, trying to share our resources with them, so we're looking forward to that as well. Do you guys have any questions for me? If not, Candace, thank you. I would entertain a motion. I a motion to approve and accept the share of medical written report for October 26, 2021. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Hannaford, a second by Dr. Simon, to approve the Share Medical Center written report for October 26, 2021. Roll call vote, please. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Okay. Next, Chris, CFO's report. Okay. Uh, Operating cash uh, in September is around 8,000. Uh, we're still kind of hanging in there with that. Um, AP, uh, 497,000. Uh, if you look at the graph for those gross days, we're talking about filled and unfilled days. You know, our, our, 
are unbilled, like on page six, you can kind of see them for the AR, are unbilled, um, been higher the last two months. Um, you know, we just had a meeting with True Bridge today, and we're hoping that's something that we can kind of get back on track. You know, you're always going to have some unbilled out there, uh, just waiting for uh, charts to get finished or coding to get finished up. Uh, but the last two months have been higher than we typically like to see it, so we're uh, hoping we can get that back on track. Uh, along those same lines, uh, we had our, our meeting with True Bridge this afternoon because uh, our AR is still climbing. Uh, we had a good talk with them, though. They, uh, you know, we've had some issues with them in the past. Uh, they have gotten us a new True Bridge team altogether. We kind of just, just uh, voiced our displeasure with them, and they have worked on getting us a whole new team. Uh, so we've kind of just started seeing that in the last couple of weeks of this new team and, and new project manager who we're very happy with so far. She's very eager to really jump in there and get things going. Isn't somebody that likes to have a list of, of issues lingering out there? She's a, once you ask her about it, she gets it done right then and there. So, uh, in the meeting today, she even mentioned the talk about the AR and getting kind of high, and that she was hoping within the next two weeks that we should be able to see, which I thought was pretty quick. To, to see your results in two weeks is pretty fast, but she thinks that she'll be able to get a rain on it pretty quick and, and hopefully we'll see a difference there. So. Fingers crossed that, that maybe this new team will kind of get us back on track of where we thought we would be when we first signed the through bridge. Um, outside of that, you know, gross, uh, gross patient revenue was up uh, 42000 uh, over last month. Uh, you can see the total patient days, or inpatient days, were actually down compared to August. Uh, and that down in our office visits. Uh, so that increase you know, could just be based on the patients that were here and how long they were here. Uh, uh, more, fewer, fewer de patient days, but the uh, work that needed could have been uh, more. Uh, the other kind of big number out there is you see the salaries and wages at 576000 which is 45000 almost 46000 compared to more than last month. Uh, September, you know, I we've mentioned this in the last meeting that September was going to be the big month. Uh, September was the month that we had all of our providers were still here. Um, and then in October is when we saw uh, Paige leave, and then in November is when Dr. Galvis was going to be leaving. So we had everybody's salaries were on the books for September. So we should see in October that number go down, uh, and then I'll go down again. And what should happen, so we'll keep an eye out for those uh, in the next couple of months. Do you guys have any questions about anything else? Maybe a dumb question, but is it patients or insurance? For the uh, collections. Yes. Oh. It's a little bit of both. I mean, patients, you know, you're always going to have the self-pay that you're fighting to get money back from. Um, but also, there's a lot that goes into billing. So there could be one little holdup on the bill that could hold Hence up. the code in each yes. code. Yeah, 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 one code could hold you back a few weeks. Um, that's why we kind of rely on TrueBridge to get in there and find these issues quickly so that they can get them updated or let us know what the problem is so we can go in and have the providers update the charge so that we can push them back through. Um, but the kind of the problem that we had with True Bridge is we didn't feel like we were getting that. So we found several <coughs> claims that would sit out there for you know, a good month before somebody came along and actually realized, oh, here's a problem and we need to get this fixed. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you're all, it's always going to take a few weeks before you're going to get insurance to actually pay you what what they're owed. So some insurance will get it within two weeks, some it'll be a good month, month and a half, wherever we do anything. Anything else? <coughs> you mentioned auditors have yes. been here. And yep. Yeah, we can talk about that. The uh, we had the auditors here last week. Um, you know, we had an issue last year with getting our audit done kind of in a timely manner. 
Uh, this year they've already been on site. We got them everything they asked for. Uh, they'll continue to uh, send us emails and ask for more files or uh, examples that, that they'll need to take a look at. But so far everything is moving along pretty quickly. Uh, the next couple of weeks it'll slow down a little bit just because we have the cost report that we're finishing up. Uh, We'll continue to send them things throughout the, these two weeks, but most of the time will be geared towards the cost report since that's due the middle of November. And then we'll jump right back into trying to get the audit finished up. Um, he thought that if things continue on the right on the track that we're on, uh, for sure that they would be able to present the audit in January. Um, if we can get it done sooner and we want to have a, an extra a board meeting just to go over finance then they might be able to do it in December so we can get that off the books and be done with it and not drag it into May like we did last year. Do you have any questions about any of the audit or anything? Pretty standard. Especially since it feels like we just went through it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so if you don't have any questions about that, you can go to the nursing home. Uh, they're operating and sitting around 304,000. You know, they, they do a good job of uh, kind of hovering around that. They may drop down, but, you know, with their Medicaid, their private pay coming in, they'll always kind of jump back up. And Kelly does a good job of keeping an eye on his, his expenses and, and making sure they're not having to dip into so agency nursing, which is where a lot of their costs can come in but if they're down nurses having to pay extra to get those agency nurses. Uh, their AR also went up about 47000 for the month of September. Um, their, gross patient, their gross patient revenue also went up uh, at $246,000 uh, in September uh, compared to the 235 in August. Uh, you can see the patient day is 1237 compared to 1000 174, uh, that actually reads wrong. September's the 1,237 compared to August, which is 1,174. Uh, and a lot of that, you know, Kelly's been mentioning that they've actually seen an uptick in their, uh, uh, the residents. They've added a couple more. I think he mentioned they were around 42. And he thought they'd be, they should get up to maybe 43 or 44 to kind of average that for the rest of the year. So. Hoping that can stay up um, around these numbers, and um, I know that'll make him feel pretty good. Uh, their operating expenses went up. You know they've had a lot of, of new things that they've implemented, whether it's point-click care. Uh, we have another system called SQSS that the hospital uses for quality uh, improvements. Uh, they added that on at the nursing home, and uh, so that's an expense that they took on over there as a quick one-time expense. Um, so I know they've been working to get some of the, get these systems in place and a lot of them they take a little bit of that front fee but uh, once they get into it everything will kind of level back out. Any questions about nursing now? Uh, they had, you know, their meal revenue went up for September, uh, which gave them total gross patient revenue of sixty-one thousand uh, compared to fifty-three thousand in August. Uh, I know they've been doing a good job over there. Uh, October will be a little bit tougher. I know they've had in, they've had an outbreak of COVID with some of the dietary, so. The meal revenue, I know, will be a little bit harder for them for October just because they had to kind of shut that down and, and not do as much catering and, uh, and working over there with the residents. So I know, I know Karen's ready to get everybody back so they can get back to work and feeding everybody like, like they have been. Uh, but yeah, all in all, a good month for September. Uh, salaries and expenses pretty much identical, you know, $100 difference from August to September, so you know, I know Karen and, and Kelly really working hard to keep those their costs 
if not down, uh, at least consistent so that they know what to expect every month and there, there are no uh, big fluctuations that they have to deal with. Any homestead questions? Yeah, like Jim said, you'll know, finish up the audit cost report. Like I said, it'll be due in uh, the middle of November. We ask for an extension for that just because it always falls around this time that we're trying to do the audit and cost reports. Uh, we have one for the nursing home and one for the hospital, both due to about November 14th or 15th. So we're trying to get that done so that both both facilities can see that settlement as soon as possible, which is always well. That's all we have. Any questions for Chris? If not, Chris, thank you. Uh, next item says medical staff executive committee. We don't actually have anything, but I will report um, that Dr. Scott Burke actually is our new chief of staff. Uh, and they had a prior engagement uh, today or else he would have been here. So next month uh, we'll start having Dr. Scott Burke uh, will be here for the board meetings. Um, anything for Quapi? Okay. Uh, then under improvement to patient care, uh, there's the contract review of quality um, back there behind uh, patient care. You got your revisions report. Uh, Questions on that? The next item is discussion action of the revisions. Uh, that was what we just looked at. Next item would be discussion action of the COVID 19 risk assessment. You didn't take any action. You're absolutely right. <coughs> Thank you, Rick. See, that's why we pay you the big bucks. We're just trying to make sure you're paying attention. <coughs> so, all those uh, on that revisions report, everything was approved, uh, but we do need a motion to accept that. I so move. I so second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I have a motion by Dr. Brown, a second by Jay Randalls. To approve the revisions report dated 9 23 of 21. Roll call vote, please. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Graham? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Hanford? Yes. Rick, thank you for keeping me on track. My wife may ask if you can come home and do that. No, sir. Oh. <laughs> Next item is the discussion action of the COVID 19 risk assessment. Yes. So um, these two items are things that we are required to do. One, um, the, the risk assessment is kind of an OSHA format, and that was done by our, by our infection control coordinator, Amber Jewell, um, and Regina Wilson, going through um, answering the questions that's required of that. And that did go through med staff, as well as the COVID-19, um, the OSHA COVID-19 plan. And, this is information that we worked um, with St. Anthony as well to develop that. Okay. So med staff passed that on to us so that we could approve that so that that goes into our medical uh, records. For infection control. Okay. So first item is the COVID-19 risk assessment. I move to approve the COVID-19 risk assessment. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Brown, a second by Dr. Simon to approve the COVID-19 risk assessment. Roll call vote, please. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Hanford? Yes. Brambles? Yes. <clears throat> okay. The next item is the COVID-19 plan for 2021. I make a motion we approve the COVID-19 plan for 2021. Second.
Move a motion by Jay Randall, the second by Dr. Hannaford, to approve the COVID-19 plan for 2021. Roll call vote, please. Graham? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Okay. Um, Kelly is not here, uh, so we will not have a convalescent home report or a homestead report outside of the financials or a foundation report. Bridget is not here, so we don't have a St. Anthony's report. Greg, City Council report. Well, you know, as far as the things that would affect this committee, uh, Ken has talked about, there's been some changes at the uh, ambulance service, I think. The whole team at the city council is looking more forward. We're trying to come up with a five-year plan. Uh, a lot of these things weren't talked about in committee. Every committee has something going on, whether it be the pool, the streets and alley, uh, uh, the garbage service. You know, every one of them has something going on. The uh, rezoning is a big deal. I don't know how much it will affect this group. Yes, it could, but we're trying to straighten out the zoning of the town. It is very, very convoluted. In fact, you look at the map and you leave scratching your head. <clears throat> and I guess that's about it. You know, really the worry was the ambulance service. We had, had some conversations on that. Hopefully it's going better. But I understand it's going better. So. Yeah, I think the communication will be improved. You know, as far as a meeting of the city council, everything was pretty routine when the council goes. Those would be the things that sure. All right. Any questions for Greg? If not, Greg, thank you. I don't have anything thank additional to report. Our next meeting is. And look, 23rd. Um, and then uh, we do not have a meeting in December, so next month will be our last meeting of the year. So, anyways, there were no other items of new business, so we are adjourned.